when we look at neutron stars and black holes, they come in different sizes, um, uh, different masses, how much they weigh. Um, and we very often, at the first moment of detection, categorize what we think we're seeing based on that number. So the first detections that we saw a couple years ago and the, the three previous to this have all been really heavy. They've been 10, 20, 30 times the mass of our sun. Okay, so you take everything in the solar system and sweep it together, and the things that we've seen up to now are 30 times more than that, squeezed down into something the size of the southern end of Lake Michigan. Right? So these extremely dense black holes. So when you're that heavy, we're always like, these must be black holes. On the other end, when we see objects, like with this event, which are in the kind of one or two times the mass of the sun range, then our predisposition is to imagine that there are these objects called neutron stars. So a neutron star is a collapsed skeleton of a star. When the star explodes and dies, it compresses down to something about the size of a city. And the pressure and density are so high that every atom inside what used to be the core of the star disintegrates into the constituent protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and electrons combine to make neutrons. And the whole star, more or less, is composed of ultra-dense neutrons. It's like a giant atomic nucleus the size of a city. But it weighs about one and a half times the mass of the sun. So these are they're not black holes, but they're still extraordinarily extreme objects. The gravity on the surface of a neutron star is still billions of times stronger than the gravity at the surface of the Earth. But, uh, but it's, it's still the dead skeleton of a star that's not strong enough, not compact enough to become one of these more exotic objects that we call black holes. So this event, you know, the very first thing that, one of the very first things that we get is a rough idea of the mass. And the masses for this event are in the one to two solar mass range. And in our heads, that automatically puts us in the category of neutron stars. So right now, we have very strong uh, belief uh, that, that these very likely is two neutron stars going around each other at the ends of their lives, colliding and forming something. And now what they form, that something, is a big open question. What, do, what happens to two neutron stars when they combine? Do they make one new gigantic super neutron star? Or do they become a black hole? We don't know. Okay? There's this very interesting problem we have between those heavy objects that we know, the black holes, and the light objects we know, neutron stars, and we've never seen anything between them. And so there's this very important question in astrophysics we'd like to answer of, is there anything in between them? What's the heaviest neutron star you can imagine? Is it three, four, five times the mass of the sun? What's the lightest black hole you can imagine? Is it five, four, three, one times the mass of the sun? Okay, so at some point you're gonna get the heaviest neutron star possible in the universe, the lightest black hole possible in the universe, and either there will be a gap, a desert between the two of them, or they'll be overlapped. And if they're overlapped, we have some work to do to figure out how we can tell them apart. And if there's a gap, we have some work to do to figure out why is there a gap? Why doesn't the universe fill it in? And so this is where we find ourselves right now. It's like, we think they're neutron stars, but we're really interested in this gap. So we're gonna try and figure out what's going on there.